Hi guys, it is truly a nasty wrist slitting Monday morning here in the end times. Oh my god. Monday, November 12th, 2018. A fine day to go back to bed here in the end times in the former paradise of Garfield, Texas. Here on Monday morning, November 12th, 2018. And good lord, trying to pick out today's We Are So Fucked headline. You know, if I were doing a roundup today, it would, I would just sit here for the rest of the day <clears throat> talking about all the ways we're fucked on this planet, from the Amazon jungle to the bottom of the ocean, from the North Pole to the South Pole. Uh, so I pretty much just threw a dart in the Doomer headlines for today. And this one is as good a... A reason as any is that we're so fucked. This uh, bit of a no shit Sherlock story to burst the bubble of the techno utopians who are thinking we are just going to go in the ocean and scoop up the plastic in a big net. Bullshit detected. Take precautions. Okay, this is coming to us from. Yahoo News via Huff Post. What do the little greeny lefties have on their minds today? <clears throat> A huge mystery about ocean plastics remains unsolved. The crisis of plastics filling up the world's oceans is more complex than it appears. No shit, Sherlock. Contrary to popular belief, like probably the popular belief of HuffPost reading, NPR listening, clueless moron little lefty greenies, though, you know, contrary to that popular belief, <clears throat> marine plastic debris does not simply cluster in large floating patches. In fact, only a tiny amount of the plastic in the seas drifts on the surface. So, where is the rest of it? This is Carl Lavender Law, an ocean plastic scientist at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. <clears throat> Quote, quoting, quoting a, an ocean plastic scientist. Quote, we really don't know where most of the plastic is ending up in the ocean. No shit, Sherlock. <laughs> oh, God. You, you know, guys, all, all, all we can do is, is, is if you lose your sense of humor in, in the end times, you will end up looking like uh, Michael Rupert with your brain splattered all over your driveway. <clears throat> anyway, getting back to the story. So, uh... You know, so I, I should have finished my quote from Dr. Law. Quote, We can account for somewhere between 1 and 3 percent of the plastics coming in from land in a single year. So she is saying, what is this, 97 to 99 percent of the plastic going into the ocean every year is just out of sight, out of mind, perhaps. Okay, <clears throat> what's the story behind this? Decades of surveying the oceans have found only one quarter of one million metric tons of floating plastic debris worldwide. Whereas, whereas in 2015, Law and collaborators estimated that anywhere between 4 and 12 million metric tons of plastic were moving from land to the coast and oceans every year. The missing plastic could have met any one of four possible fates, <coughs> and most scientists now agree that the lion's share is likely dispersed throughout the deep ocean and sitting on 
the seafloor. No shit, Sherlock. Yes. This is Marcus Erickson, uh, co-founder of the nonprofit Five Geyers Institute. Is it Geyer or Gyre? I have heard that word uh, pronounced both ways. Quote, the mythology of islands of plastic, these garbage patches, has led the public to really misunderstand where plastic is in the world, said Erickson. While ocean currents do indeed cause refuse to amass in certain areas, like the infamous Great Pacific Garbage Patch, Erickson described the majority of ocean plastics as a kind of smog. Billions of tiny particles called microplastics, some too small to see with the naked eye. <clears throat> plastics are not as hardy as commonly believed either. <coughs> they degrade even when lovingly cared for in a museum. Out in the oceans and on the beaches, waves physically break plastic into pieces which can linger in the environment for years and, and centuries and millennia. Microorganisms can, can cling to the small plastic pieces and drag them down from the surface. The tiniest fragments can be ingested by filter feeders and then excreted as poop sinking to the bottom of the oceans. Uh, Erickson explained this as, quote, the first hundred meters of the ocean surface gets cycled through marine life, <coughs> and it is washed by the intestines of organisms. Good Lord. Uh, then they look at some of these microplastic studies. Uh, okay, so another possibility of where all the missing plastic is, is that some of the missing plastics are simply washing up on beaches and coasts. Around the world, island nations in the Pacific and remote beaches along the coast of Alaska are the depositories for plastic debris that has traveled thousands of miles. And a smaller fraction of the missing plastics could be trapped inside of animals. No shit, Sherlock. There's the all too familiar story of plastic pieces clogging up animal guts. Scientists have also captured zooplankton, microscopic critters at the bottom of the food chain eating microplastics. That means the plastics could be traveling from animal to animal throughout the marine food web. And I just want to, they don't talk about it here, all of these uh, horseshit stories about these different organisms eating, eating plastic. Well, no shit, Sherlock. Well, uh, a lot of shit. So what, what happens when these, these little organisms eat the plastic? They just shit it back out uh, like anybody else who eats plastic. Uh, you know, that, that, that whole horse shit. Anyways, that's another rant. And to a lesser extent, the plastic polymer strands could be breaking down into small molecules through chemical reactions triggered by sunlight. Um, so this summer, a new study from Sarah Jean Royer at the University of Hawaii found that plastic debris submerged in seawater and exposed to sunlight decaying into greenhouse gases, 
like carbon dioxide, methane, and ethylene, and once activated, the degradation continues even in the dark, said Royer, quote, greenhouse gas production from plastic is another sink that previously was not taken into account. While it is unclear how much plastic has turned into greenhouse gases, it has turned into gases, and how much of those gases escape into the atmosphere or stay sequestered in the oceans, uh, this could constitute a significant but unmeasured source of greenhouse gas emissions, she said. For the most part, the mystery of the mis missing ocean plastic can simply be blamed on a lack of data. Uh, most surveys for plastic are conducted at the ocean surface using nets designed to study plankton, sea floors, and each ocean's water column, on the other hand, are much less studied. There you go. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, we're going to wind up with one more quote from Royer. You look at the surface and you look at the bottom, but you're still missing most of the plastic because the ocean is deep. No shit, Sherlock. At the moment, with plastic pollution, what we are missing is better technology. Yes, and, and I can, it, it, this is a no uh, brainer. Uh, no shit Sherlock uh, doomsday prophet prediction is that the more they, they learn to track the 97 to 99 percent of the ocean plastic that that fucking little net up there scooping up that plastic, uh, you know, uh, once they actually start figuring out where the hell the plastic is, you better believe you're going to be seeing the headlines coming out over the next few years. The problem is a hell of a lot worse than previously thought. And you can take that one to the bank. Uh, anyway, I'm going to wrap up uh, this week's, well, today's, not this week's, this is one day's We Are So Fucked uh, headline of the day. I, I have uh, a month's worth of, of We Are So Fucked headlines uh, on this gloomy-ass Monday morning. But uh, I'm going to wrap up this We Are So Fucked headline of the day. I'm going to change shirts and go look at uh, the collapse of the planet. And then I'm going to interview uh, yet another physicist today about several ways that we are so fucked as this planet collapses all around us. Smoke them if you got them, guys. And we all know why. Bye, guys.